Wah! Hello, ladies and gentlemen. If you have ever been a South American country in the late Victorian era trying to modernize your military, please hit that like and subscribe button. Hello, my name is Ike the Mage, and today we're going to be shooting a very beautiful oh. Steyr M 1912 carbine made by OEWG Steyr in 1912. These were given to the Chilean on contract. If you want more in-depth history on this, I highly suggest seeing Arsenal's video on the 1912 Mausers. They go way in more in depth than I ever could. Today we are going to be shooting 308 out of this. And you might be wondering, well 308 wasn't around in 1912. Ah! And you would be right, this was converted in 1961 to 308 or 762 NATO. Even though that's sad as me, a history nerd, uh, it is still a great rifle. It shoots well, it's a beautiful Mauser 98 action. That uniform's Farb. Well, yeah, buddy, this whole channel's Farb. Get used to it. I'm a brass monkey. That funky monkey. Woo! Let's load up some 308 real quick. Oh, God, it's so good. We are in the deep woods of Missouri with a Mauser. Now, this is a perfect gnome hunting rifle. All right, the gnomes are real. The government does not like to tell you that, but the gnomes are real. They like to steal your left socks, all right? That's something a lot of people don't know. If you've ever had a left sock missing, that is a gnome, all right? If you're still around, I would like to uh, dedicate this part of the video to our good friends over at Covey Surplus, Mr. Covey is an awesome dude, really chill. They have great surplus, very good East German stuff that you can go buy. Link to their uh, to their page will be in the uh, description below and in the pinned comment. If you know anything about me, I am a big sucker for German and Austrian history, like in the late Victorian era. So like this being a Steyr Mauser is just the best of both worlds. Now to give you a little bit of more detailed look at the rifle i am going to send y'all to ike the mage in the gun closet he's not very funny he likes technical stuff stuff like how a gun works i'm a i'm a brass monkey i'm a goober for youtube i like to shoot guns and make memes Change of scenery, we are at Ike the Mage's gun closet at the cleaning table. Here we have our Steyr Mage Chilean M1912 Mauser. Now, most of you who have shot in a bolt action or have just collected Millsurf in general will know what a Mauser 98 action is, but for those who don't know, we're going to start from the tip of the rifle down to the butt of the stock. So first, we are going to start with the barrel. Now, we have a triangular front post sight that is adjustable. Uh, this is your typical Mauser front sight, especially for the 98s. Note that it does not have a hood like the later Car 98Ks. Next, we have our cleaning rod. This is a half cleaning rod. Uh, the, the end is threaded right here. You'd have a buddy uh, in the field with you who'd connect theirs to yours and then you'd, uh, then you'd you know, give each other's back after you're done your cleaning with the rifle. These are hardly ever matching their rifles. Please note that. Here we have a bayonet lug with an H band holding it in sturdy in place. Now I have the bayonet. The bayonet will loop around the barrel and it will also fit into this lug quite nicely. Note that the later Car 98Ks and uh, the German Mausers will not have a barrel ring typically around their bayonets. Next we have our disassembly uh, punch for the front band, one for the back band right here too. Note, we have a front sling loop right here. Now if we move back down, we have a top hand guard uh, that's flush with the stock. Now we get to the rear sight. The rear sight is a very nice tangent leaf sight, but sadly you cannot walk it up. You have to punch both of these down to walk up each increment on the sight. 
the left hand side will have even numbers right hand side will have odds and this is battle sided it's starting zero is at 300 meters so each click is 100 more meters so 400 500 600 etc all the way out to 2000 meters note we have a screw here if we were to disassemble this rifle fully this screw would take the top handguard off after taking the two bands off now we work our way down to the receiver we have a beautiful chilean crest right there it is hard to see exactly on camera but this is a beautiful chilean crest we have modello 1912 and underneath it it says nato right there and kind of poor i mean they did the best they could i guess but this is kind of poor etch work this is to denote that is it, it is in 308 or 762 by 51 nato now we get to the side we have the manufacturer stamp right here we have Waffenfabrik steyr austria denoting that this was made in steyr when austria hungary was still a country now we have several little unit markings and everything now do note that a lot of these will have a lot of these parts will have stamped 61 on them that is to denote that this was the conversion in 1961 to make it 308. now we get to the trigger note that we have a belt loop right there that is a rear belt loop and we'll have one further down the stock but we are working with a very nice trigger right here two stage trigger we flip the stock over we have the magazine plate right here and then disassembly screws right here now we get to the rear of the stock close we have our last sling loop so you can have it either at the front of the trigger guard or the rear of the stock now we turn the stock over we have a semi pistol grip right here which is very nice gives you a good grip on the rifle then we have a typical mauser style buttstock right here with a metal back plate note that the metal back plate is really worn because this rifle was probably used in hundreds of drills now on the basic uh, field stripping so how a mauser 98 typically works you unlock the bolt right here bring it back push it forward. A lot of Mausers have a last round catch in the mag that will stop you from pushing it forward. This one does not have that clearly. I can manipulate the bolt at will. Now do note that the bolt is working on a two lug in the front, or it's working on two lugs in the front, one in the rear. So if you've ever handled a bolt action rifle, this will look familiar. A lot of modern and uh, even in this time period, a lot of bolt actions were derived from the Mauser 98 system. So I'm going to lock the bolt. We're going to work our way to the bolt release right here. So if I, if I were to have the bolt all the way back, push this out, I could take the bolt out. But that's a two-handed operation. We're going to wait till we disassemble that. So here's the firing pin right here. This is going to tell you if the rifle is ready to fire or not. When I pull the trigger... This will depress, and you can see that it's fired if the firing pin has gone forward. Now to reset the firing pin, all you have to do is unlock the bolt, and it is back in place. Now we're on this to the safety. When the safety lever is all the way to the left, that means it's ready to fire. If I put the safety in the middle, this is your disassembly safety. I cannot pull the trigger, see how the firing pin won't go forward, but I can manipulate the bolt at will. And that will come handy later. Now, if I put up the safety all the way to the right, I cannot pull the trigger. Note the firing pin's not going forward. Nor can I disassemble the, or nor can I unlock the bolt. So to disassemble, we're going to put this to the middle, and we're going to use this lever here real quick. So I'm going to unlock this, bring it back a little bit, and I'm not going to do it all the way yet because it's a lot smoother if I hold this and then do it. Now we have our bolt free. I'm gonna put the rifle down for a second. Carefully right here. So now we have our bolt. So you can clearly see if I move the extractor, we're working on a two locking lug system in the front and one rear locking lug in the back. Now to further disassemble the bolt, note we have a little plunger right here that we can move with spring tension. I'm going to push that and rotate it out of place. It will click 
nearly every rotation until it is free from the bolt housing. And this is your firing pin and safety mechanism right here. To disassemble this further, and why we have this at the middle, I would have to push on this very hard firing pin spring here and take it out. But I'm not going to do that today. There are many videos that will teach it better than I do. I do not want to, you know, go through the hassle of having to take this apart and putting it back together. So there's that for you. Now we're onto the bolt body. Note we have an extractor right here that rotates if we were to rotate the bolt. Let's say the bolt's riding and I lock the bolt in place. The extractor doesn't move, but the bolt rotates. So that's why this rotates. It is running along a little trench right here. And you can see on the bolt body, there's a piece that's rotating to hold it in place. Now we're going to take this off real quick. So I'm going to run it along its furthest right position. And we're going to gently push on this big part of the long extractor right here. We're going to gently push on that. It's going to lift it out of the trench. We're going to rotate it a little more. Then we are going to carefully push it out. And that is our extractor. Now we have our bolt body right here. Fairly simple construction. I will grab the other bolt body I have. Note that these, besides the handle, are the exact same construction. The only difference between these two is that this one's bolt handle is straight and this one is turned 90. We're going to go to the magazine disassembly right here. So I'm going to take a round because this was meant to be done when you clean your rifle. You, there's not a special tool for this little spring loaded plunger right here. You would just pick up a round that you had on you to take it out. So I'm going to depress this little plunger and push the magazine out of place just a little bit. It doesn't take a lot. So we have our magazine spring here. We have the follower right here and we have the plate right here. I'm going to take this apart. So I'm going to set the rifle down. Here we have the magazine spring. I'm going to just align this out of place real quick. Very simple. And then same with this. And here's our pretty ingenious magazine spring for an internal mag. As you see, when I depress it, it lays almost completely flat. So that's pretty ingenious by Mauser right there. Note that these are identical inside, so you don't have to worry about mix matching them when you reassemble it. So like so, I'm going to push this into place until it clicks. There we go. And then I'm going to, along these grooves, do the exact same thing for this one. This one doesn't really click so much, but let's take a look at our follower real quick. So a lot of Mausers will have this, see how that's like grounded off at a 45 degree angle right there. A lot of Mausers don't have that. So when you're out of ammo, the bolt like will not go forward, just, uh, letting you know that it's out of ammo. Mine does not do that. Um, mine just allows the bolt to go forward. So I guess you're supposed to count your rounds, however many you're firing them. Note that pretty cool heat treatment right there. I'm not sure if that's a mistake or not, but it still gives drip to the rifle. And last but not least, we have our bayonet. Uh, note this is a reproduction frog. This is not an original, but the sheath and the bayonet are original. Sadly, they're not matching. So I'm going to take this off. We're going to look at a couple of things on the bayonet right here. Like I was talking about earlier, this has the barrel loop right here. And if we look at the markings at the bayonet, we have OEWG. That is the what is the official name of the Steyr factory when Austria-Hungary was still around. So that does tell us that this is from Steyr. If I turn it around, you have a... I'm going to flip the bayonet around so you can see it easier. You have a simplified version of the Chilean crest right there. Kind of see that right there. So I'll grab the... I'll grab the rifle so you can see the crest again. But between the hawk and the deer, if the camera would focus, maybe. Come on. There, there we go a little bit. You can kind of see 
between the hawk and the deer that simplified Chilean crest that is on the bayonet. So, pretty standard bayonet. Uh, we do note that this we have the bayonet release button right here to depress it from the locking piece, and I will show you how to put it on the rifle. So here's our rifle. We want to be looking at this part of the rifle. We have our bayonet lugs right here. The bayonet has a hole at the grip, and that is important because when lining up the bayonet, you want to put the cleaning rod in the hole like that. And now you can see how the guide rods from the bottom of the bayonet are going into the lugs right here. You don't have to press the button when putting it on. And we want to line up, it wiggles a little bit, so we want to line up our uh, barrel loop to go perfect right there. And you'll hear it click. And it's on there pretty tight, like this is not going anywhere. So note that it's on the bayonet lugs. The loop has gone around the barrel and it is in place. Now to take it off, you can like grip the bayonet like this and use your palm to press that button to quickly take it off real quick. But if you want to make sure you get it done, then just have your thumb on the button and just push it off gently and it will come off very nicely. Now that I've shown you the rifle from tip to butt, showing you how it works, how to field strip it a little bit, showing you the bayonet and the different types of bolts that would be on a Mauser 98 action, we'll go back to Ike the Mage in the field. ADD break. Thank you, Isaac from the closet. But um, today we are going to be showing you how powerful 308 is. To show you the power of flex seat, no, I'm kidding. But to show you the power of 308 or 7.62 NATO, we are going to be shooting a one liter Diet Coke. And you might be asking, why a Diet Coke? Well, because Diet Cokes are gross and anyone who argues with me is wrong. Eliminating the objectively worst soda ever in three, two, one. <laughs> That came right back at me, but uh, let's assess the damage right here. So, it is absolutely eviscerated. It looks like, looks like there's our entry right there. And as soon as it evaporated the Diet Coke in here, it keyholed straight down into the wood. That is crazy. Look at that. That is nuts. I don't see an impact on the wood per se. I'm willing to bet the bullet just key holds straight down. Dang, that's crazy. Man, I would hate to be on the receiving end of a 308 shooter like this in like, what, 19, 1920? Like, goodness, I know World War I happened, but like, holy cow. Ugh. We're nearing the end of the video now, and I'd like to thank your mom for the amazing time last night. Okay, on to a serious note. I've, uh, I've shot about maybe 400 to 500 rounds through this. This is a high round review. I know for a fact that this has had more rounds in it than I can count. And it, honestly, this has been a great rifle. I've never had an issue with it. Um, it's been smooth. It's really pretty. I really love the dark wood on it. It's just a late Victorian era vibe. And anyone who says this is not drip, get out. We don't want you here. I'm, I'm kidding. We love your views. Looks like that's going to be it, folks. If you enjoyed and thought this was funny and also learned a little bit of Mauser history, please like and subscribe to Ike the Mage. And please go check out Friends of the Channel Covey Surplus. Link in the description. Thank y'all.